That'd be great. Okay, thank you. And all right, take two. Let me start again. I wish I'd never seen it. I bought it because it was the perfect prop for a story I wanted to tell my grandson. The next time I babysat, I said, Trip, let me tell you a tale. Once upon a time, there was a man who found a lantern, a lot like this one. He noticed it had a smudge. He rubbed the lantern and suddenly there was a puff of smoke and a genie appeared. The genie said, you are my master. I grant you three wishes. Chip seemed to be enjoying the narrative and the baby always loves my voices. I was about to continue the story when suddenly there was a puff of smoke and a real genie appeared. The genie said, that is not how I sound. You insulted me. I shall punish you. I said, I'm so sorry. I always use voices when I read to trip. The baby loves my voices. The genie thought a moment, <laughs> then picked up two books and handed them to me, saying, demonstrate your voices. If I like them, I will go back into my lantern and forget this whole dreadful incident. But if I do not like your voices, I shall banish you to the lantern for a thousand years. I picked up the first book, The Runaway P. My favorite voice in this book belongs to the moldy grape. I like to give him a gangster attitude. The story is about a little pea who pings off the plate and runs away. He has adventures all day long and toward the end of the book, he decides he's gonna get back on the plate. But the grape tells him, you won't. Cause you been on the floor. Run away, P. You're not welcome anymore. The genie was smiling, so I picked up the next book, The Mindful Dragon. I explained that when I read this book, I give the main character a strong British accent. My kids think I lay it on too thick. They say that I sound like the character Mrs. Featherbottoms from the sitcom Arrested Development. But the baby always loves my voices. Hello. My name, the genie interrupted me. Stop, stop, you are terrible. Your children are right. You sound exactly like Mrs. Featherbottoms. I know, I've seen Arrested Development. I'm Cable and Lantern. You fail, goodbye. I blinked. And I was in the lantern. My first thought was, maybe the kids are right. Maybe I am overacting. My next thought was, what am I going to do for a thousand years? I've already seen all the episodes of Arrested Development. I looked around. And saw a desk with notebooks and pencils. 
I've always wanted to write a book, but I never had the time. Silver lining. I picked up a notebook and pencil and started writing a story about how a mean genie locked me in a lantern for a thousand years. When I finished, I stretched. And then I saw it. Like Dorothy's red slippers, it had been there all along. A panic button. I pushed it. There was a puff of smoke, and I found myself standing in Tripp's room next to the genie. The notebook was still in my hand. I opened it and closed it on the genie as I screamed, the baby loves my voices. The genie shrank and melted to the pages. I put the book on the top of the bookshelf at the bottom of the stack. And that is where it sits today. My story might sound unbelievable, but if you think this is just another tall tale, read the book, I dare you. But you might want to practice your voices first. Thank you, Peggy. That was very fun and entertaining. The next person I'd like to call up is West, our second speaker. Would you please um, start your speech, please, Wes? Go ahead, Olivia. Before, we, before Wes starts his speech, we did not go over the roles. If we could just do that real quickly, just to make sure that our guests know the roles for this evening. And I will start off with the, I have the role tonight of the grammarian, and I also will go over the word of the day. And I put the word of the day in the chat, and it is sumptuous. It's an adjective that means splendid and expensive looking, sumptuous. My, I am also responsible this evening for the grammarian's report. And in doing, I'm sorry, I will be listening for misuse of the English language during our spoken speeches, table topics, and evaluations. If you could, Carrie and Wes, give us your roles for this evening, please. I'm sorry, Carrie and Maurice. Okay, I'll, I'll do first. My role is a counter tonight. I'm going to check how many times you use filler words such as, such as, you know, well, um, like, okay, yeah, something like this. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, tonight I'll be the timer and I'll be timing the, the prepared speeches and the table topics and for the prepared speeches, five to seven minutes tonight. At five minutes, you get the green light. At six minutes, you get the yellow light. And then if you reach seven minutes, you'll get the red light. And for table topics, that's one to two minutes impromptu speech. At one minute, you'll get green. At one minute, 30 seconds, you'll get yellow. And at two minutes, you'll get red. And that's my rules timer. Thank you very much. And then we have Woody, if you would tell us about your role tonight as Table Topics Master. OK, thank you. The Table Topics Master is an individual who comes up with topics and picks people to speak and between one and two minutes on a topic. For example, if I said, uh, Olivia, could you tell us a little something about bears? What do you think about bears? She would off the cuff, she would try to share some experience or her knowledge of bear, whatever the subject happens to be. 
you know, it can be politics. It can, it can be anything. It can be summertime. It can be whatever. And the idea is basically to get you to think on your feet and be able to speak for a minute or so on a topic that you haven't prepared for. Some people think it's scary. Uh, other people like me think it's kind of fun. Most of us think it's kind of fun. But anyway, so it's just basically extra, extra, how do you say that? Extra. It's speaking off the cuff, just making up whatever you can uh, about a topic in, in a minute or so. And, and it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you all. I think we've covered all of our roles for this evening. And then we will turn this over to you. Oh, Junior Evaluator. That, oh, that's me. That's right. Um, my position as general, general evaluator, let me write down, write that down right now, is to discuss the flow of the meeting. I'll talk about what time we started, how things went. I will give a quick synopsis or overview of my opinion of the speeches, the table topics, prepared speeches, pocket speeches, what have you. And then I will also call on the other members that had roles this evening so they can give their reports. So I'll be talking to the grammarian, which is myself, the timer, the speech evaluator, and the all counter. So that will happen during the evaluation portion of the meeting. I think I've covered them all. Thank you very much. And Wes, Wes, your hands raised. Yeah. I'll be evaluating Peggy, but is somebody going to be evaluating me? Mr. Josh is going to do your evaluation. Oh, ah, okay. He got you covered. He has your form. Thank you very much for submitting it. Okay, Wes, pardon the interruption, and you can take it away. Before we get into the speech, but uh, just a few minutes, I think it's understanding my communication style. See that that now begin the speech. Mr. Toastmaster, Toastmasters, honored guests. According to Toastmasters, there are four different communication styles: analytical, initiating decisive and, and supportive. Now, as a Toastmaster, you might have a, a preferred communication style, but as a coach, I've seen, I've, I've used a number of communication styles, depending on, on the situation. If, for example, I'm giving a humorous speech, I may use the initiative, enthusiastic type of style coupled with a analytical, logical approach. But now, now, for now, as we come close to the end of the Toastmasters year, my, my thoughts are a bit more pragmatic. I'm using more of a direct style, direct decisive style, coupled with a supportive style with um, of a group of very excellent club officers with, a, with an analytical approach. I'm very fortunate to be working with very, from excellent club officers. Olivia has been our cheerleader. Maurice is very adept in, in putting together our social media and, and, get, and getting our credits to the to base camp and leadership central. And Kari and, and Donovan are doing a very good job in their respective roles as treasurer and, and, and secretary. But our challenge is to work together to try to be to achieve distinguished club status by June 30th. Now that could be a bit of a tall order. 
because we still have a way to go. But it's not impossible. I've faced, I've had, I've shared impossible situations before. I mean, I think I've mentioned this before. It's not impossible. I can give you three illustrations in which seemingly impossible situations were met with success at the at, at literally the last minute. I remember one time in, in math and in college, there was this one particular math class I had that there was one math concept that I was having a problem with. And I was at the final exam. I'm looking at this. And it was at the final exam. And I looked at this problem and all of a sudden, it was a Ramanujan moment. It, 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 it came clear. I understood what, what, what needed to be done, what substitutions had to be made and, and how to go about solving the problem. So I aced the, aced the exam and got a good grade in it. Another situation was some years later, my family and I were visiting friends in Los Angeles. At that time, we lived in Detroit, Michigan. We were living in, well, we visited friends in Los Angeles. We had this beautiful little cocker spaniel mix, this precious little dog. So we put her in the backyard and then we went off to, uh, to an event together. We got home, she was gone. She had dug her way out underneath the fence and would disappear into the city of Los Angeles. Now, what are the chances of finding a little dog in a city, in an unfamiliar city? Well, I very methodically went out searching the blocks and I searched for six hours trying to find that little dog and I could not find her. So I said, okay, what have I got to lose? I'm gonna try one more time. So I went to the general area where she was last seen and I saw this little black shadow run across my path. It was Poochie. So I picked her up and took her home. In a possible situation, she was lost for six hours and I found her. Another situation is when I was working with the Naval Oceanographic Office. It was at the end of my tour and I had it extended at the office for another month, but the, the, the chief scientist coming up board says, no, you, you, you're, you're rotating now, you have to go, you're, you're scheduled to go home. So I walked to a pay phone in Bermuda, called the office collect, spoke with the scheduler and explained that we had made arrangements before I left that I would have this extra month. But by the time I got back to the ship, I got word back that I was granted that extra month. Now that was an example of a direct, decisive communication style. At the 11th hour, it worked. It was an impossible situation that was made possible. The point is, I've been in situations that were, which would be considered impossible, but they were made possible with effort and focus, with focused effort. We have a great, we have a wonderful organization in Hilltop Resource Masters and a great core of officers. The problem is to make it known what we have to offer to the general public. And I believe that we have the capable, capability of doing that. And I will work for that to the last minute, to the last hour or the last day. And I'm sure from what, I, what, I, what, I, what I've seen in caliber of the folks we have as the, the club officers, that they will follow suit as well. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Russ. That was very intriguing. The next person I'd like to um, link the next one to is the Tabletop Expaster. Would he, would he please 
about your wrong piece? Sure, thanks. Okay, for the first topic, I'd like to call on Carrie. Carrie, can you, you tell us what's your favorite summertime activity? My favorite summer activity. My favorite summer activity is to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> there are two reasons. First, I try not to get the ultraviolet from the sun. Otherwise, when I go out, I put the double hat and one of them is pretty big and it put the sunblock and arm cover. That's what I do. And so stay indoor. But I, that does not mean sit down on the couch watching TV and drinking soda. My activity is stay indoor, but still do something indoor, such as go to the gym or indoor swimming pool or go to the friend's, visit the friend's house, or do something indoor. And another favorite activity is in summer is, I would say, cooking. Of course I could do any other seasons, but summer we have July 4th, 4th of July. That's a great opportunity to uh, do the grill. And, also, we have a summertime, we have more grill time, do the barbecue, um, chicken, uh, whatever we would like. And I really enjoy it. And I like, that's my favorite activity. And we could do that after the five or six, not the peak of the sun time. That's why I like to do <laughs> So basically, what I like, my favorite activities in summer is indoor activities. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Very good. I bet your food is sumptuous. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Josh, same question. Can you tell us what's your favorite summertime activity? All right. Hey, everybody. Favorite summertime activity is fishing. I enjoy all kinds of fishing. Sometimes I will go to a stream up in the mountains and trout fish. Sometimes I go to Louisiana and fish the backwaters for redfish. And then, of course, here, you know, at the local rivers, catfish, bass, brim, and my favorite, crappie. Um, love to eat fish. Love to fish with friends and family. And it's always a great time. And like Carrie said, uh, these days I've become smarter in my older years. Wear big hats lots of sunscreen and sleeves to stay out of the sun. Thank you very much. And Donovan, how about you? What's, what's your favorite summertime activity, Donovan? Thank you, buddy. And on a, thank you, buddy, fellow Toastmasters and our honored guests. My question that I've received was, what is my favorite summer activity? That's a tough question because there are so many things I enjoy doing. Like I like to go and have picnics at a baseball game, or I like to go and watch a softball game or something that's outside. Well, you can at least have some exposure to the sun, but also have a way of communicating with other people. To me, that's the perfect time to lay back, enjoy a game, have fun with your friends, but also have a good meal. Like, for example, a PB&J with, with zaps, lemonade, and brownies. That's just the perfect, perfect activity that I think that that highlights summer. Thank you and back to you, buddy. Oh, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Okay, I'll turn it over a little, I'll make it one more. Um, this one is a little more on a serious note. Olivia, 
in view of what's happened in the last two or three weeks in this country with guns and people getting shot and all that kind of stuff, we've all seen it on the news. Do you think that we should have more gun control in this country, or do you think it's about right? I and mean, what is what is your opinion on gun control? Good evening, everyone. My question I have is: What do I do? I think we should have more gun control, or are we just where we should be in the U.S.? And this is a very controversial topic, and I know I only have two minutes, so I will just give you my brief synopsis, and I will try to make it sumptuous sounding. And that will be that I definitely think that we should have more gun control. We need to really be focusing on after, I mean, from the manufacturer, how easy it is to alter these guns, to turn them from a semi-automatic to an automatic, the way that you can buy individual pieces and then make a gun that has never been registered, no serial number, and it could be used for mass destruction. At the same time, it is not the good people that are committing the crimes. So I happen to be one of those who believe in the right to bear arms. I have my children, they are adults now, but I have taken them to shooting ranges as well as myself. I go, I practice, I learned about gun safety. And I do think that we, anyone that wants to have the right to bear arms should be able to. And it's for me, it's only for a defense. If it wasn't for the bad guys in the world, I would have no need to use a weapon unless I was hunting. And I sure cannot kill Bambi. So it's not for me to go hunting with. When I used to eat uh, meat, I loved some animals, but I just can't. I couldn't kill them. So it definitely wouldn't be for hunting. Yes, I think we have, We need to have more gun control. We need to find a way to stomp out, stop some of this violence. And at the same time, we need to have the right to bear arms. Hope that makes sense. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Hey, that was a sumptuous reply. And I happen to agree with you 100%. Okay, do we want to do one more or are we, we're going to be short on time? What do you think? We need to wrap it up because we okay. do need to try to Okay, do we'll go ahead and wrap it up and we'll make that the last one. And thanks for your reply. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Woody, for a great table topics uh, portion of the meeting. Back to you, Toastmaster Donovan. Thank you, guys. That, those were all sumptuous speakers that was spoken of. The next one, the next one I'd like to um, call upon is the general evaluator. Wait, actually, yep. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Olivia, would you please do your one, please? Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone, again. And I have the lovely role tonight of being the general evaluator. And before I give my evaluation, I will call on our, my team. So my first team members are those that will be giving the prepared speech evaluations. And our first speech was Peggy and Mr. West is going to evaluate her speech. Thank you very much. Wes, take it away. Yes, Madam General Evaluator, I am going to nominate Peggy's speech, but Peggy asked if she could ask one question. Would you like to ask a question now, Peggy? I would. So I'm, my, I'm going to give this speech again. It already won, so it's not a big thing. But the last sentence, so the, the end of the speech is, if you think this is just another tall tales, Read the book. I dare you. But you might want to practice your voices first. So my question is, so the, the title of the speech is Voices. Voices, Peggy Hill, Peggy Hill Voices. My question to everyone, and maybe just give me a quick thumbs up, thumbs down. When I gave this speech live and in person, people started laughing and applauding before I finished the last line, which is, but you might want to practice your voices first. 
If you think this is just another tall tales, read the book, but you might want to practice your voices first. Do we think that we like that last sentence or just can the last sentence? That's my big question. So if you like the last sentence, but you might want to practice your voices first, give me a thumbs up. If you think it's better without the last sentence and it just ends on read the book, if you like just ending on read the book, like nix the last sentence. So that's what I'm asking people because I, I have to give it again. And so it's, it's kind of a nuance that again, the end of the speech is, if you think this is just another tall tales, read the book. I dare you. But you might want to practice your voices first. So nix the last sentence, keep the last sentence, yes. Nix it, no. Everybody avoid, vote. Keep it, nix it. Keep what it. Do you think? <laughs> You're all good with key. Okay. All right. I was, I was curious because when I gave it at the district thing, that people started clapping and applauding before the last sentence. So I thought it might be more impactful without it. But anyways, thank you. Thank you. And I don't want to take up much time. I just wanted to get people's opinion on that. And Wes, I don't need much of an evaluation. So just give me something brief. Well, I will say I will say this one thing, Peggy. I think that your voice, your range went down. So I thought you were done too. But knowing that the title is Voices, I think you should definitely end with that word or that phrase that includes voices. But if you think this is the end, I mean, if you think this is a tall tale, you might want to read the book. And it sounds like you were finishing there. I thought the same thing. You might want to read the book. I dare you but you may want to practice your voices first. When I got, when you put that little bit on the end, it immediately reminded me to go back and I, re I immediately thought of all the voices that you use. So I think it's just the fact that your voice kind of goes down right there. It does give you the impression that you're done. So if you can just grab the audience at that very last second, hold them, like take a deep breath, make them hold their breath. And then you could, I think it'll be a great ending. I loved it. Wes, go ahead. I think that's I think that's good. I, I, I'm thinking I, I like the I dare you, but then but then again, if you come back and and uh, you know a split second later, Voices. yeah, that that's, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. But in in the in, briefly in the eval, um, all these elements, your excellent presence, well prepared. Great projection. Um, very high points on clarity, vocal variety, eye, 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 eye contact, gestures. Audience was very aware of your comfort level, characteristically excellent. Be interested, uh, you're very engaged with your audience. But what, what I'm going to point out is in your first presentation several months ago, you gave us the hero's journey. And I have the hero's journey graph here and I see where you implemented it uh, from, from my interpretation. Uh, your, your challenge with your, with your, with your, with your grandchildren and, and working with the genie um, friends and foes, children, <coughs> explaining the genie, <coughs> excuse me, explaining the, the genie lamp, um, skills and knowledge, the demonstration of the different voices, and, and the, the, the plummeting of the defeat to despair, or the genie says, you're banished for a thousand years into this lamp. And then you have to take a leap of faith. By golly, I'll just go ahead and read and see what happens. And you found you found your way out, and you left the lamp. The genie was relegated to the pages of that book, and, and you're home free. So 
you 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 showed us that uh, you demonstrate you um, demonstrated your hero's journey in in that speech, and apparently it worked very well since you won first place at the district conference. It's always a delight to hear presentations. Thank you for 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 sharing that with us, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, thank you very much, Wes and Peggy, for your speech. I truly enjoyed it. Now on to our second evaluator, which will be Josh, and he will be evaluating Mr. West's speech. Josh, take it away. Hey, everybody. Uh, Wes's speech was titled Understanding Communication Styles. Uh, the, the main topic was the four different styles that you know we communicate with, differential, analytical, initiating, and well, initiating, supportive, and decisive. Okay, Wes does a fantastic job of using real life examples to drive the point home. Uh, that definitely keeps me engaged of something, you know, something to hear and compare, you know, to what I'm hearing. So I gave Wes excellent marks, uh, clarity, eye contact, gestures, uh, he massaged the acknowledgments of the club. Uh, always great to hear. Uh, great ambassador to Toastmasters and just another great speech. I think I've, I've heard Wes speak every time I've logged on and uh, does a great job. Back to you. Yes he, yes, he does. Thank you very much, Josh. And do you have his email so you can email him that evaluation form? Do you have Wes's email address? And as we're done, I'll send it to you. Okay, you do have it. All right, thank you very much. Very good for that. And I would like to call on the rest of the team that had a role this evening in taking the minutes. And that will be our, I'm sorry, not the minutes, our timer. And that will be Maurice, if you would please give us your report. All right, thank you. The times for this evening, Peggy's speech was six minutes and 35 seconds. Wes's speech was seven minutes and eight seconds. Carrie's table topic was one minute and 55 seconds. Josh's table topics was 46 seconds. Donovan's table topics was one minute and 16 seconds. Olivia's table topics was two minutes and eight seconds. Wes's evaluation of Peggy's speech was two minutes and 22 seconds. And Josh's evaluation of Wes's speech was one minute and two seconds. Thank you very much, Maurice, for your report. Moving on to Kaori, who has our, let me see, you were the all counter, correct? All right, if you would, please. Our counter, let's start with Peggy's long speech. I didn't detect any filler words. Wes, your long speech, I didn't hear any filler words. Josh, your short speech. And I forgot to count it. <laughs> and about your evaluation, I heard uh, uh, three times. And Donovan, and I forgot to count it. I'm sorry, I really enjoyed your, your speech. And Olivia, okay. Uh, your your short speech, so table topic, master speech. It was very controversial topic, but you did very well. And I did, I heard only one earth. And what was impressive to me is I forgot a particular phrase you often use it, but this time I didn't hear that. So it was really good, especially you talk about something really difficult topic. I'm glad that my question was not this. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Carrie. Was that all of them? I think you did everybody's, correct? Thank you very much. Yeah, that was a very controversial topic. And I was, well, I, I was so uh, Wes, your, your evaluation, I didn't hear anything. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very controversial topic. And I was looking so forward to talking about what I 
like to do in the summer because I was going to piggyback off of Donovan because he talks about being with family and communicating with friends and getting out and just, you know, enjoying a good meal. And I'm always looking for some new colorful recipes, something to try and inviting people over. So I was excited about that. And then I got gun control. I was like, oh, wow. But I am very uh, adamant about my beliefs with gun control. So I'm okay to speak my my opinion. It's okay. It's mine. And it's I can I can speak it. So thank you very much. Uh, let's see, I think I will start with the grammarian report. And I am happy to report that there was absolutely no misuse of the English language. I listened during Peggy's speech with Carrie, Josh, Donovan, and myself as well. And then as far as the use of the word of the day, Woody, you used our word sumptuous twice. Sumptuous is splendid or expensive looking. Olivia used it once and Donovan used it once. If I missed anybody, please let me give you credit for the use of the word of the day now and it's still not too late. We got a few more minutes before the meeting is over and I will now give my general evaluation. Everyone was here on time. Thank you very much for that. For the most part, we may have had one or two that was coming in just a few seconds late, but we did good. We took a three minute recess while we went over our roles for the evening and waited for our final few members to come in. So that wasn't too bad, 6.40. Eight was our start time versus 6.45. So it's not perfect, but it wasn't bad at all. I really enjoyed, Peggy, your speech was awesome. And I really, you are really good with those voices. Very good for that. So I tell you, I use those crazy voices. Sometimes I'm Jamaican, sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm British. And all of those, and all those voices. And, uh, and my kids say, mom, you're getting on my nerves. Well, whatever, just whatever comes up. Depends on how you act is how I react. So I love it. You did a great job with your voices. Where's your speech? I just don't know what else you could do to encourage us. I think you have done a good job. And one thing for sure, you are consistent and persistent. So we thank you for that. And it just warms my heart that to have someone like you as our club coach, because truly it is an honor to have you. And we know that you have Hilltopper Toastmasters at heart. And we thank you for that. Now, going on to our table topics, it is good, and especially with our guests that we have, for them to see the lighter side of table topics and then the more serious side of it. And the, the good thing about these type of topics or any topic at all, it gives you that opportunity to, like you said, be able to speak on the dime, on the fly. And there are always there's always an opportunity for us to maybe be talking to a boss or maybe a client or who knows, maybe you're speaking to someone that you would like to get into a business with or network with. And we have to have those communication skills. And if someone asks you a question about you, you really need to be able to take that one or two minutes and sell yourself or either sell your response, whatever it may be. So very good for that, Woody. I think all is well on our front. We're so glad to have our guest on tonight. And that is about me. That is about it for our general evaluation. And I will turn this back over to you, Donovan our Toastmaster for the evening. Thank you. Um, this was a great meeting that we had, just piggybacking on what Olivia said. Now, I doubt that we would have time for education and education overview. If not, then I'll just go ahead and make sure the next one back to the active president, Olivia Caldwell. Thank you very much for your role this evening, Donovan, as our Toastmaster. We do have a few minutes left, and I would just really like to take this time for us to go over our nine.